recently found out some very shocking information about uh, preachers in the uh, would be the 20th century I guess and how that they were actually heavily um, financed for doing what they were doing and um, over the years I've had to relearn a lot of things that I was not taught I shouldn't say relearn but I had to learn um, what I was not taught in high school relearn meaning um, I was taught the wrong things and so I've had to go back and study things that just never made sense to me and I study it from a, the angle of actual truth and then I start to realize ah, okay this makes sense you know and um, I one of my greatest desires as a preacher is to understand as much as I can on as many subjects as are possible so that I can tie those subjects in with the Word of God um, this book is relevant this book is the source of all truth, um, the foundation for all truth uh, in the world springs from the Bible. The Bible was the first book that was printed. Remember that. Okay, enlightenment and truth and wisdom comes from this book. All right, this book is not used to control people. Ignorance of this book is what controls people. Okay. I think it was Horace Greeley said the one time, it is impossible to mentally or socially enslave a Bible-reading people. And I don't believe the man was even saved. But the point is, he made a statement of truth. And he was absolutely correct in what he said. You cannot enslave or control people that read this book. This book leads to enlightenment, right? to understanding, to wisdom. And so as I've been catching up on my studies and of course now I'm a homeschooling father so I also have to teach my son the truth um, we will watch economics videos and things and I share things with him from books and my wife does as well and and we're really trying to educate my son our son into you know all of the different angles and aspects of of uh, what he needs to know to make it in this world so I was watching a video on uh, economics and uh, how you are programmed to be poor and very interesting subject but the woman doing the video brought up a quote from an economics uh, book and uh, it says here I'm going to put the thing up on screen and it says much of this education however was not technical in nature but social and moral workers who had always spent their working days in a domestic setting had to be taught to follow orders to respect the space and property rights of others be punctual docile and sober the early industrial capitalists spent a great deal of effort and time in the social conditioning of their labor force especially in sunday schools which were designed to inculcate middle class values and attitudes so as to make the workers more susceptible to the incentives that the factory needed hmm so sunday schools were there to basically create workers well, you say, what's the quote there? And things, well, I couldn't find what, what the book was, where the quote came from. But here's the point. If you can't find out where it came from and if it's a valid quote and whatever else, or, well, who wrote it? It could have been an atheist. Yes, it could have been. But is there truth to what the statement said? Does it work out? And the answer is yes. Because I remember being in Sunday school and we were taught those exact things to be a good worker and to go out and you know you sit there in church and you be quiet and docile and sober and and you pay your 10% tithe to keep the corporation going he said oh brother Brian oh please listen to me please listen to me in this study it's going to be very important the church buildings were financed by Freemasonry to create factory workers and good not just factory workers but good workers good citizens are you a good church going citizen you see there's a reason that there's no church buildings in the new testament it didn't just all of a sudden pop up out of thin air and now all of a sudden we need church buildings you know we just never have had them in the past and you know um but now we have to have them there was an agenda okay now the interesting thing about this is I showed this quote to my wife when we got to talking about it, and I said, you know, that's so weird. And I thought, wait a second. I remember that there was a man that would actually go to factories and preach to the people. And he was big into Sunday school and everything else. 
one of the early founders of it. You say, who would that be? This man right here, J. Frank Norris, one of the biggest Baptist preachers of the 20th century. Century. He had two huge big churches, one in Fort Worth in Texas and the other in Detroit, Michigan, I think is what it was. The two biggest Baptist churches and all these Baptists that have come after him, a lot of them have patterned their, patterned their ministry after J. Frank Norris. He was a big proponent of the King James Bible and church buildings. Just, you know, I'll preach and teach the King James Bible, teaching of the, you know, English, whole English Bible, but I'm going to get people into the church building system. But if this statement that I showed, if that's true, is there any supporting evidence in this book? You see, if that was written by an atheist or some secular person that hated God and hated the Bible and whatever else, then you could say, oh, just throw out the quote. But if you're wise, you'll look and you'll say, wait a second, if that quote is real and accurate, then you might see some evidence of that being implemented in the Baptist movement, which this guy was one of the heads of it, the whole independent fundamental Baptist movement. So let me show you some pictures here from this book that are going to prove exactly that, uh, yes, he was working with industry and the Sunday school movement to create docile workers. Let's look at this. They have a misspelling there. It says, The leading stores closed their doors and called all their employees together to hear the gospel by Dr. Norris. The above picture is of the morning, the mo moaning, moaning, I guess, dry goods company, several hundred employees listening to Dr. Norris. Huh. There you go. There's one of where he's in a factory. Intermediate department Sunday school crowd in temporary tabernacle after the first fire in 1913. A huge, big Sunday school. He's going to factories and they're building these big Sunday schools. The above picture is Leonard Brothers employees listening to Dr. Norris preach. He has standing invitation from all places of business. Again, a misspelling there. Business in Fort Worth. Um, Yeah. There you have Dr. Norris received by the Lord Mayor of London in the famous Mansion House. Now, for those of you out there that are from the UK or Ireland or Scotland or whatever, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the Lord Mayor of London and the Mansion House, isn't that heavily Masonic? Put it in the comments. Okay, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. And here you have the Lord Mayor of London. Again, they misspelled it, Lusden, you know, London, showing Dr. Norris the ruins of London in 1941. The mayor took him in the private, in his private car after giving him a rep reception in the mansion house. Excuse me, can't read today here, but uh, there you go. And how does a preacher get that kind of attention, unless he has Masonic ties? Doctor Norris in the private office of the Grand Mufti at Jerusalem. Huh. The above picture was the speaker's stand at the ecum at the economic club where 1,500 industrialists gathered to hear Honorable Sam Rayburn, Speaker of the House of Representatives, reading from left to right, they are uh, Dr. J. Frank Norris, there with the black suit and the kind of checkered tie, uh, nothing to that, of course, um, Malcolm, Malcolm W. Bingay, editor of the Detroit Free Press, Honorable Sam Rayburn, with his coffee cup up to his mouth there, Speaker of the House of Representatives and Mr. B. E. Hutchinson, Executive Vice President and Finance Committee Chairman of the Chrysler Corporation. Okay, um, the quote that was in that video. You say, well, that the woman that did the video, she's not saved. She's not. Okay, th that's irrelevant, because you see, I mean, it's lost person put it down a comment there, but the fact of the matter is, this is supporting evidence to it. Written from a book, written by uh, professing Christians. So if it was just a vicious attack by some lost woman or whatever else uh, that made the video, um, why is it supported right here? Oh brother, the church buildings, God has used the church buildings. Really? Really? Hmm. Corporation. Chrysler Corporation there with uh, Dr. J. Frank Norris at the same table. Let's get these uh, church members, good church members. We want good Christians working for our company. 
Hmm. And eventually the church buildings become corporations themselves. And God's all for that, right? Right? But Brother Brian, you don't understand that our church doesn't do that. Our church is good. <sighs> Very distressing. You say, are you saying that uh, J. Frank Norris would be a Freemason? Is that what you're saying? Let me show you another picture. When Honorable Sam Rayburn, Speaker of the House of Representatives of the American Congress, was the guest of Mr. K.T. Keller, President of the Chrysler Corporation, and Dr. J. Frank Norris, they went through the largest tank factory in the world, the Chrysler Tank Factory. From right to left, Honorable Sam Rayburn, President K.T. Kelly or whatever, Keller, and Dr. J. Frank Norris. So another picture of them together. You say, well, okay, but well, he was with the guys and it doesn't prove he's a Freemason. Well, how about his uh, Dr. Norris on graduation day photo from his own book? Look familiar? Get my hands out of the way so you can read the words there. Isn't that the Masonic hidden hand? I wonder how he got the two biggest churches. In America at the time. Hmm. Nothing to it. But uh, one final thing I want to read here. As I was going through this, I had it flipped open to this page right there. Where they're all sitting there, you know, talking about ways that they can get uh, people to be good workers and whatever else. Industrialists. We had the Industrial Revolution and everything else. We need to train, get the church buildings built. Our Freemasons will do it. And then we can bring all the people in and train them to be good citizens. Don't tell me it didn't happen. It did. But I'm, you know, I had it flipped open. I showed my wife the picture and she's looking at it and she starts reading over on the other page. I read this book. I have this book highlighted like crazy. You know, there you can see I'm highlighted it. I thought this guy was a great man, you know, listening to Peter Ruckman and Old Dr. J. Frank Norris, he was a he was a strong man of God. You know, I just was so inspired to be a preacher because of the godly witness of J. Frank Norris. I never even saw this. I never even saw what's on page 330 of the J. Frank Norris I have known by Dr. Lewis Ensminger. Right there. I bought this from the Bible Baptist bookstore too, by the way. Um Listen to this. I'll put it up on screen. Dr. Norris had already been to the several members of the Common Council, the Honorable John Lodge, Eugene Van Antwerp, and others. Mr. Van Antwerp is one of the leading Roman Catholics of the city, and after the objection had been filed against the Temple Church securing the permit, Mr. Van Antwerp rose and said, I know that there is a law that permission should be obtained through the Ministerial Alliance of or the Detroit Council of Churches, but this council is the law, and what Detroit needs is a great revival. As a Roman Catholic and not a Baptist, I move that we suspend this law and give Dr. Norris his permit. Dr. Norris rose and thanked the council and led the whole crowd singing, Old Time Religion. The Roman Catholics were working with the Baptists in the early 1900s to build church buildings? And Sunday schools that would teach people to be good little factory docile workers so that one day they could be 501c3 incorporated and not speak against things that the wicked government was doing and not stop the Roman Catholics from coming to power? I have some real doubts about a lot of the Baptists out there who just cling to this nonsense right here. Oh, the old time religion. Oh, the old. You're the enemy of Jesus Christ. The conspiracy gets deeper, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. God is not an idiot. God didn't write this book and then smack himself on the forehead and say, I forgot to say to build churches. I forgot to be called Trinity. Oh, oh man. If that's the God you worship, well, have at it. You know, whatever else. You can worship any idiot like that, some retard God that you have. Uh, I don't worship a God like that. I worship a God that finished it. It gets to the end of the Bible and he says, don't add to, don't subtract from it. Boom, finished. 
I don't want papal traditions. I don't want Baptist traditions. I want the Bible. It's infuriating. And the sick thing is, God a lot of times will let lost people bring out the truth because there are no Christians that are willing to do it. Isn't that sick? And God actually uses lost people to judge the saved, or at least the professing saved. Let me say it that way. Oh, brother, you know, yeah, I know that the Baptists have some problems. I know that there's some issues with Dr. Hiles and you know him messing around with his, you know, deacon's wife and the secretary and things. You know, and then you know, I, I know some stuff there, brother. But you know, we, none of us is perfect. You know, hey, man, if God knew everything about you, you know that, or God knows everything about you. If we knew everything about you, that God knows, you know, but. Uh, Stop making excuses. <laughs> if you're part of that whole system and you haven't repented yet, you better get out of it. I mean, I don't know, even know what to tell you anymore at this point in time. If you're still in it and you're still defending it, <laughs> whatever. So that's going to be it. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Going forward, it's the King James Bible. I have no loyalty to any man. I can't. Brian, what do, what ministries do you recommend? <laughs> uh, I don't recommend any ministry. Uh, not even this ministry above the Word of God. Um, you hold me to the standard of Scripture. It's the Bible. The King Jesus version. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. So many men that I thought were, were great and everything else, you know, Two books on Billy Sunday, Freemason. There's a book on Sam Jones, Freemason. I was <laughs> thinking, oh, <laughs> where's the great old time religion, the old heroes of the faith and everything else? Oh, well, they were actually working for Satan. You know, it was all part of the big thing, the big picture of, you know, getting people into buildings and teaching them to be docile, tithe paying, you know, workers. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, I hope you understand my sense of humor, brethren. If you're saved, I'm sure you do. But uh, if you're not saved, uh, you know, uh, please don't judge me based on these stinking hypocrites like J. Frank Norris and all these Catholic pedophiles and everything. Don't judge me on that. I'm not part of them. Okay? I'm seeking to do my best to distance myself from these guys as much as possible. Um, don't yoke me together with them. I'm a Christian. They are not. Okay? Uh, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching. <laughs>